Hey everybody, this is Joey. I am here at the Press Center in Tel Aviv where we have just wrapped up rehearsals for the day and now every country has performed at least once in rehearsals. Um, except for the big five, everybody's actually performed twice. So now would be a good time for us to check back in with where we stand on the leaders in terms of the predictions and the odds. So lots of changes in this past week. Um, first, I think Azerbaijan has, is in it to make a run for, for winning for the first time since 2011. Uh, Ching has wrapped up the day today with his second rehearsal, and I think um, the, the bookies are reacting favorably to this. The, the rehearsal and the staging is very visual, very futuristic, uh, and you know, it's a high-impact song, high-energy song. So uh, he looks like to be one of the strong, strong contenders to win Eurovision 2019 a week from tonight. The other uh, big contender emerging this week has been Sweden. I mean, John Lundvik was a contender all along, but this really, really has shown the kind of the depth and the, the, the life that this song has to continue all the way from Melody Festival and winning all the jury's votes um, to now bringing uh, some real momentum for Sweden to go ahead and win yet again this decade. So watch out for John Lundvik. He's uh, currently in our number four position, but I see him with some um, positive momentum there. I think, uh, actually he's number three. So I see him like, actually sneaking up and becoming uh, the, the, the one to maybe really challenge D Duncan next Saturday. Um, also we'll mention Malta. Malta's been on the, the rise here since, since uh, Michaela's first uh, rehearsal earlier this week. She had another rehearsal today, and uh, there was big changes to her staging um, in terms of the, the LED being used. So I think um, there's a lot of buzz around this performance. Again, it's a very catchy song, very upbeat. Uh, she, she might be the one to bring the, the Eurovision trophy for, to Malta for the first time ever. Uh, and then someone who's not been in our top 10, who now enters uh, close to the top 10 this week, is, is France. And now... Uh, Bilal is 10th on our list now, and th this song was a favorite early on, but kind of drifted from really being a threat to Duncan Lawrence in any way. But the staging that Bilal brought, along with the very compact messaging and what the song is attaching to in terms of people's hearts, I think is going to resonate a lot. And um, I think certain bookies are seeing this as a potential winner. But I will caution that I feel like we've seen this before with France, where Madame Monsieur like, was really close to being the, the odds favorite last year, and that kind of drifted off um, in the end, and they didn't finish in within the top 10. So we don't really know, um, but this is a lot of fun to see things get shaken up a little bit here while we're getting towards the end. And uh, you know, tomorrow there's another rehearsal for the big five countries. And so we'll get a little bit more, we'll kind of understand where Italy sits. Um, Mahmoud has not been feeling great, I know, but, uh, and the odds are reflecting a kind of a flat-ish type performance uh, from, from, from yesterday. So he's, he's currently still sitting in second on, on our odds, but, but, the, uh, <laughs> but uh, th that's, uh, you know, that could change at any, any moment. So um, just to wrap things up, I think that uh, we've got our favorites here with, between the Netherlands, Italy, and Sweden. Uh, and I see a two-horse race developing um, between the Netherlands and Sweden, actually. Unless Italy picks it back up and pushes that momentum forward, and unless we get a new, another surprise from maybe another strong performance from France tomorrow, and uh, we could be seeing uh, Bilal like, uh, up there in the conversation to potentially win Eurovision 2019. So check back with us early next week before we give the, our last qualification predictions before semifinal one. Thanks for watching.